I, I'll just I just started recording and we're gonna start off on the screenshot where it says introducing and shows all three of them and we're just gonna give our feelings on uh, how we feel about them all but first off I am the Ghastly Gengar here today with I guess I'm Lloyd Chuckleton the third mm-hmm and, uh, mm -hmm. yep. and I guess uh, <laughs> I guess the scrub's not introducing himself. Alright, someone's link's not going in the description. Alright, so first off, we're starting off with a screenshot of uh, the three starters just all together on that weird sumo platform thing. And just overall, how do you feel about the design of all three of the starters? Uh, well. I'll start. I might get first. <laughs> Alright. Uh, hurt, hurt, hurt. Rowlet <laughs> is awesome okay like just look at it it's gonna be like top selling plushie guaranteed guaranteed i don't know man i i really like litton man litton you, is... got, you got him written over here hopping straight out of sabrina teenage witch okay like thing needs a backup nah nah rowlet will body it okay <laughs> rowlet will get rowlet's gonna Litton. rowlet's gonna learn air slash it's hidden ability is going to be Serene Grace, and it's just going to body it, okay? <laughs> and then you got, you got, you got Poplia. <laughs> well, my opinions, uh, I'm mostly the same. Rowlet looks friggin' awesome and adorable. Litten looks amazing. Um, but I'm <laughs> different with Poplio. I think, honestly, I really like them. Like, usually how, uh, usually all three of us get, uh, the Pokemon games and then just have a different starter for each person. I'm actually happy with the starter that I'm getting kind of stuck with, because, um, I know that Guess the Gengar is going to definitely do, choose Litten. As soon uh, as that trailer came out, I that. claimed him. <clears throat> as soon as, uh, I'm sure, my, I know for a fact that, as you guys can tell, like, my G2A2 over here is, like, Extremely into Rowlet, mm. so but me, I'm pretty uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, Flathers. I'm pretty happy with getting stuck with Poplio because I think design-wise he looks pretty cool. Um, and then just judging from the little bit we saw in the trailer, like he looks sassy as fuck, and I love it. Hey. So let's move on to the screenshot that is just strictly just Rowlet. All right, let's just gonna focus all of our thoughts on this adorable Animal Crossing motherfucker right here. So, I have a feeling that Rowlet is going to just kind of be like a really cool Pokemon for the first two forms, but when he gets to his third, he's going to be like that meh, like how everyone felt when Fennekin's final form, uh, what was it, Bra not Braxian, uh, was it Braxton? Uh, uh, no, no Delphox. No. I have Del a feeling he's going to kind of have like a Delphox third form where everyone was kind of let down with it, but they're still kind of happy with it. Uh, that's just my thing, I don't know. I'm, I'm still just calling it straight up blathers, though. Uh, I, I would like to take back my comment about saying it's going to get Serene Grace. It's actually going to get Thick Fat and just take everything. What I see is, um, since Rowlet is like, <laughs> no, I believe, um, Rowlet is going to be like that, uh, kind of smart Meiji Pokemon, so he's going to get, like, maybe Roost or something, and then, uh, maybe, I don't know, some most. He, I feel like he's going to be, like, a complete special attacker. Oh yeah, oh, for sure. I, I, I feel it's gonna be a pretty speedy special attacker at that. I mean, you read the uh, the actual like Pokedex descriptions on the Sun and Moon website, right? <laughs> Not at all. Well, apparently this thing kicks pretty hard, and I don't see that. Look at the feet, man. I mean, look at those look feet, feet, man. <laughs> no, I mean it's one foot tall. It's three pounds. I just don't see this thing kicking like hard as a rock. Like, I can see the, how the claws could, could just, like, scratch it. I just don't have to see pure kicking power. Well, yeah, I mean, people said the same thing about Torchic. But that thing can help kick. But no, yeah, Torchic like, evolves into something that had pure kicking power, but this is just straight up, this Pokedex entry for Rowlet says I mean, it's could, straight up kicking power. I mean, this could, too. But I'm just saying, why give that, like, the Pokedex description to Rowlet when so far we know nothing about it, and, like, Maybe so far it's just, like, a little baby chicken? Maybe it's gonna have a new kick move. Like a yeah. flying type or a grass type kick move, you don't know, man. 
Yeah, maybe. Like, there's definitely gotta be at least one or two new moves, so... They already hooked this up with, uh, what's it called, like, leaf... Leafage. Something. Which Leafage. is basically just, like, the ember in the water, or bubble, or whatever, of the grass type, yeah, because... Exactly. So uh, they can throw in, like, a couple new kicks, okay. maybe some punches. I'm definitely happy been a while. that finally, when you choose a grass starter, you're not starting off with, like, your major move being stupid, like... Uh, what is that? Leaf, leaf seed or leech seed, and uh, just like absorb because that really just wasn't. It's just not that. It wasn't fun. handy. Because you have tick, tackle, and then you have their not so good move. It's like, what do I do with this? Are you sure they got leech seed as part of their original thing? It's not I something. Like that it's like completely... they don't get a good move till like maybe. Vine Whip or something, and even then, you don't get that till they're almost already evolved. Are you calling Vine Whip a good move right now? I'm saying Vine Whip is the only thing that they have to compete <laughs> with Bubble and Ember. And especially then, Ember would or Vine Whip would not make sense for this Pokemon whatsoever. Like unless the bow tie. Unless the bow tie just like somehow extended into like two different vines, but I that's extreme reach. I don't see I mean, that. I mean, I could see that. I, I just yeah. There have been stranger cases with Pokemon that like would never make sense, but it happens anyway. I, I told you, man, it's gonna have vine kick. <laughs> All right. The flying knee. So uh, I don't really. Like, other than that, yeah, the only thing happens. I really see about this Pokemon is maybe when it evolves, like, its wings get covered in moss or something, and then, like... Because I heard a lot of stupid shit about this Pokemon, like, oh man, it's gonna be a bug grass type in like, its third form. It's like, no, this thing's just straight up glass, grass flying. Why would it... Why would, why I would it don't know! Like... Grass flying to grass bug. That doesn't make sense. Exactly. And it's a goddamn owl. It's an owl. <laughs> How is it going to be a bug type? I have no clue, but other than that, I really don't know what to say about this Pokemon. Like, right, uh, it's the only grass Pokemon that legitly made me want, like, to second thought my choice of a starter. Like, this thing uh, is great. No one cares about Chespin except you and this party of three. Mm, okay. Chespin's garbage. <laughs> what, what about, what about Tertoid? I didn't, well, Ch Chuckleton right, likes, I don't. <laughs> See, Tertwig is different. Uh, different? Different. They got that dedicated wham? Ah, uh, for sure, Dan. <laughs> nah, like, Tertwig is different. Chespin, I always did not like. Even, like, when the Gen 6 starters were announced and I saw their designs, I did not like Chespin for the start. His moveset's pretty good, but for the most part, it's garbage. And I didn't even, like his evolutionary, so... I, I didn't like Chespin from the start. I really don't like the whole four Third times week flying types. I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of that. Alright. So, um... I guess we're moving on to Litten. The, the starter I'll definitely be freaking choosing, because this thing is adorable, it looks freaking... It's edgy as fuck. This is like... That emo kid from the 2000s that liked to listen to all those bands that had fingerless gloves and shit. But I have a feeling that this is definitely going to be a fire dark type right off the bat. And I want to point out to so all the ones who are saying it's going to be firefighting, it's not. Because I've actually looked into this. There has been no fighting types on four legs other than the Swords of Justice. And that's only because they were legendaries. I have no clue really why the reason behind that was making them part fighting or whatsoever, but these are just... This is going to be awesome. I would like to uh, take a moment right now to uh, point out people will try to make that point because of Gen 6, but Gen 6 just made it so like each type is super, like four times effective because there's grass fighting, then fire psychic, and water dark, so why would this be like... A fire fighting type thing and be weak to the grass type. I really don't, unless they make it like. like oh shit, what's if that? If it's thing? following that, it's gonna be like. Fire electric or something like that. It'd be like. More effective against the flying type. I really like that. I can't wait to see what it looks like when it evolves because this is gonna be the first time we've had a cat Pokemon since Gen 1. 
that legit looks interesting, other than literally having the only other cat Pokemon being literally a weird-ass spiral tail thing, literally going into a Pokemon that's literally in its name, ugly. Like, I, I'm really hyped to see how this thing, like, evolves, and I really hope that it gets some sweet-ass power, maybe it gets, uh... What's that ability, like claws or whatever, for for uh, it's like sharp claws ability, just tough because claws? tough claws. Yeah, I want to see that and have just build like something off of its claws or something like that. I don't know. You know, like a cat should have. You know, instead of you know, yo man, this is gonna be freaking like where your Rurumon and shit, man. It's gonna be freaking fire fighting tonight. <laughs> this will not be a cat where your Rurumon. I freaking give you that as a hundred percent guarantee. I mean, even if it is, it's gonna be, like, bullshit, but still, like, I highly- I'm pretty sure that, like, uh, what's the, the fucking Pokemon says name? Like, wh who are the people that make Pokemon again? Game Freak? What? I forget the name right now, I have no idea. Game why. Freak? Game Freak. Game Freak, yeah. Oh, I had so much questions, you're like, the Poke Center. No, 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 I was making the actual- The Pokemon Company? Inside. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. Game Freak, like, I I'm pretty sure, like, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're, like, almost done with the game by this point, so I'm pretty sure they've already put a lot of, like, deep thought into how exactly this gotta go, and they're also, like, trying their best to listen to, like, fan suggestions and stuff like that, instead of, like, uh, just basically just making up random crap that makes no sense. They're actually trying their best. Uh, to actually make sure that everything is fine. This thing is just amazing in my opinion. I just can't wait to choose this Pokemon as my starter and just go on my adventure and beat the game within, hopefully within a day. Because I really don't know because how big this area is. Because this area seems pretty freaking big and I don't know if I can actually beat this game I mean, in 24 hours. Personally... Personally, I'm not hyping it up that much because oh, yeah. we said the same thing about Gen 6. Gen 6 sucked. But then I'll... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? The story was no. mad, the rivals were mad, and then it's like the whole evil team of the region was mad. There was no post game whatsoever, and when you finished it, it's just the only thing I had to look forward to after that was Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and that was just ex. That was just an excellent example of what they should have done with that game. I mean, like, for, I, I mean, I didn't mind Gen 6 at all. It's just that when we were seeing the game itself, we thought it was going to be much bigger than it, what it actually became. So I'm not hyping the, I'm definitely hyping this up, but I'm definitely not hyping it up to that extent, like, the size of the map. Because even, like, when we were playing the game, the transition between the first and second gym was gigantic. But that was gym after gym after gym, instead of, like, an actual transition from one point to another. It was well, just, we'll get further into okay, that once we reach the screenshot of the map, because I have a little theory about this, but, alright. Just... Okay, we yep, can skip on up the end. No, uh, not yourself, we're talking about Poplio. All right, so Poplio is, of course, a seal, a circus seal, whatever. It's a thing. A lot. I think it's getting way too much hate for what it's gonna. I think it's gonna be a water psychic type or a water ice type. And the reason I think that is psychic may because like it can perform circus acts, just on like juggle or crap like that, and maybe ice, so it can like make a huge ice ball and roll around on that, like the seals do at the circus. I don't know, but I have a feeling that this third oh. evolution is gonna look amazing. I would prefer if it did not become an ice type, because if it becomes an ice type, it will straight up body well. <laughs> that that is that's not a good excuse for that. It's just like why? That's not a good excuse whatsoever. <laughs> oh, I don't want it to do this because it's gonna hurt my Pokemon. Well, I mean, you don't want your Pokemon Hello? to get hurt. I mean, they are your friends, man. You don't want I your mean, friends course, to get hurt. I mean, of course, but, like, <laughs> you don't want to be there, like, yeah, I don't want this to happen to my Poke uh, to that Pokemon because it it'll affect my Pokemon. So you can't do it. Ice will be four times effective with Rowlet, okay? And, like, if they do that, uh, that's kind of going to hurt, like, a lot. 
And, uh, I, I would appreciate it very much if they did not do that. It's, it's just a prediction. I really don't. Yes. I, don't yeah. I don't know what's gonna happen with it, and I don't know. I mean, Actually, I feel like Pop Duel's gonna be like the slowest of the three. And he's gonna be like a bulky wall, like <laughs> wall rain, like, like and stuff like that. Another uh, stupid. I was stuff. gonna go with more of like a wall rain type approach. Uh, Another stupid like speculation I heard about this Pokemon is someone said it was gonna be a water steel type. I don't. How? How? Exactly. How do you think this is gonna become a water steel type at all? Like, it's a freaking. Like just looking at the picture right now. That big ass smile right there. How is that gonna, gonna become a steel type? And then someone tried making this thing, or this point where it's like, yeah, man, every water type in the game has had some kind of weapon, and every grass type was like, uh, or some kind of dinosaur. It's like, no. Freaking Fralligator never had a weapon. <laughs> Uh, friggin' Swampert I never mean, had a weapon. They could have. But he didn't. Wouldn't that be stupid? But that's like, they were like making this connection somehow between them that something that all they right. had on all of them was some sort of weapon. Well, for alligator got that massive tail and that giant bite. That's not and a then, weapon, that's part of their so body. Swampert was kind of let down, so over the years he started bulking up, he started putting on that weight, you know what I'm saying? Then he made him evolve. And he made himself go okay? <laughs> Started in the gym, on the top, he eventually got there. <laughs> now they think I'm a jerk because I'm an ultra big. Oh my god. Um, nah, for Poplio, I honestly, like, personally, speculation. Um, I think I'm more with what Gasly the Gengar said. I think it will become a water ice type. Uh,. Just by the look of it, like, that would perfectly make sense, and then plus, like, the moves that I could learn that would be more circus-oriented, that would make a lot of sense, and especially, like, making, like, ice balls and then, like, just shooting them at enemies, that kind of thing. I don't know what I'm going Another with thing I thought about just is... Like, just like... Uh, continue, my bad. Uh, th okay. No, no, well... I was just... <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> what no, I was thinking I was of, too... Like... <laughs> I'll finish off and then you go. <laughs> yes, go. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was just gonna say, like, just like, I think it'll just definitely, like its design, just focus on a lot more moves that are actually, like, circus oriented. So it's gonna have, make, like, a little ice ball and then bounce it around, that kind of thing. So I think that'll definitely happen. Um, but it's just too early to speculate right now. One thing I thought, like, it was way off. I don't know why I thought of it, but, like, just like the little ring around his neck, I was like, what if, like, a sea lion is a type of seal, right? I'm not uh, sure. I am not a... Uh... <laughs> because what I thought is like, with that weird neck thing that he has going on, I thought somehow he would like evolve into a sea yeah, lion, exactly. and that would just turn into like a huge ice mane or something like that. Just like, I really mean, dragging out. Sea lions right now, I am not seeing that neck thing. I don't know where well, you're that's that. not on a regular seal either. That's just like something that's added in effect at circuses no, and stuff, like a tutu. All right, yeah, Pablo yeah. just straight up mugged the clown. Okay, he took his nose, took the scarf. <laughs> Yo, if Pablo ends up turning into a clown, I'm gonna be so depressed. <laughs> like he's straight up happy Damn. about it. He just mugged the man and is like, "Yeah, I did it." All right. <laughs> just look at that face. So I guess we're moving on to the screenshot of the quote-unquote region. Where, at this point, we could all agree that this is taking place in Hawaii, right? Oh no, man. Kinda looks like Denver. Bruh. <laughs> Alright, so, from what I've looked into, Hawaii is made out of a general of, what, eight islands? So, I'm saying, like, a gym for each island. And this is supposedly supposed to be, like, Honolulu, Hawaii. So, what I'm thinking is, since there's only one Pokemon Center here, that this is just gonna be one area, like you, like if you look on the top of like kind of like left, like middle of the picture, that's where you get your starter Pokemon because of the stadium and the house and whatnot. But I was thinking like, how big is this area actually going to be? Because if you look at the trailer, it's freaking humongous. Like when he's walking past everyone in that one car and stuff like that, it's huge. Like, 
I really think this is going to be a big region and it's going to involve a lot of surfing or using a boat because, you know, islands and all that jazz. If there's a lot of... Yeah, I was about to say, if there's a lot of surfing, IGN is not going to be happy, man. Well, IGN can blow like, it out their ass. <laughs> they got a remake where you barely went in the water that much and they were like, yeah, that's too much. But it's like... then the originals are like 10 out of 10 perfect. But one thing I did think about is, um, so you saw the camera angle when you were walking into the city, right? Where it's just right behind your character and everything. How yeah. would, if that, I'm not saying it's going to be the exact view or whatever. I'm saying, like, because I'm expecting this to have a Pokemon Coliseum kind of camera angles and stuff like that. But I'm just like, if yeah. for a portion of that area and, the, like, how everything is up to scale and, like, actually atomically correct. How would you find the hidden items in that area? Like, say what if on... Um... On. What if on the new 3DS you could actually control the camera angle? I was thinking of that, but I was like, are they really yeah, gonna make so. like a complete feature or something where like a whole like chunk of people who are gonna buy the game won't be able to do anything with it because they don't. I mean, like, they won't like like a lot of games that are like have different features on the new 3DS. Don't disregard the players who stay on the normal 3DS, like Monster Hunter 3, uh, Hyrule Legends, like. They, uh, they, like, they have a way to control the camera and stuff like that. It's just that it's less convenient. While yeah, because in Monster Hunter, it's, oh, the there's a control pad on the bottom of the screen and you have to touch it and take your hand off the controls completely to, like, but, I mean, in this game, it kind of would be okay, but I want to see the bottom screen used for something completely just, like, kind of like Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, but more, like, open to stuff. It. I, d I just want to see it used more in the game, not just some kind of like shortcut to your backpack or something. I mean, I, I just want, I mean, yeah. I, would I feel like if they make it more than just like the backpack, like I don't know how much like the 3DS will be able to handle, especially with like the actual 3D models and that, no. and like especially how big this is going to be. I'm saying more like, kind of like really a Poketech feature. Like, it would have all the features of, like, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire's bottom screen, but then it has, like, maybe some stuff that you could do on the bottom screen that maybe, I don't know, just something else to do on the bottom screen than just be a convenient place to just slap everything that you don't want a menu shortcut to. Yeah, but, I mean, I see, I see where Mikey's going with it, though, because, like, I, the, if this game, like, just judging by this one area, if it's going to be as big as, like, uh, Gas Again, I think it's going to be, I am questioning, like, how it's going to be handled. Like, how, I, like, I'm thinking, like, like, if by this point, this is most likely going to be the last Pokemon game for the 3DS. I'm calling that now. And uh, I'm just wondering if for this last one, they're going to just literally fill the cartridge up to so much that there's literally no more space for it. Like, that's how I'm feeling about it. Like, if... And I'm wondering how much they can actually do after their plans are done. Like, they, what they mainly intended for the plans itself, like, after that, like, I wonder how much they'll actually be able to do, because if this game is going to be that big and their character models are actually detailed, what more can they do? Like, the 3DS can do a lot, definitely. It's just that it can't do as much as, like, a home console or anything, so it's quite it's suitable what exactly can be done with it oh, after yeah. what they intend to do with it. Now, I want to ask you, like, when you say the last 3DS, do you just mean for the original 3DS or both just the new and old 3DS? Because I can definitely like, see a last... remake coming out after this. I feel like they're going to have a lot more games for the 3DS. I really Especially think the 3DS like... is far off from its, like... When the... When the 3DS came out, Pokemon was still putting out games onto the regular DS. Yeah, I believe Black and White 2 yeah, came out. Like, I really yeah. believe that this is definitely not the last 3DS game. This is... Or, well, Pokemon for the 3DS game. Well, I'm not saying, like, last Pokemon 3DS game in general. I'm saying more, like, of a generation. Like, I could see a, one more remake, but I'd say, like... After that, once Nintendo announces, like, the new, uh, handheld console and stuff like that, I'd say maybe one more after that, but for the most part, I'm thinking, like, we're getting close to the end with it. 
you can also say the same thing about the series in general because everyone's like, what are they gonna do after this? And like, there's, they're running out of just like stuff to do. I mean, it's a lot of things that we could say are coming to end, but then we realize it's only just the beginning of what can actually happen. Gone. Like, I can see, like, can you imagine playing through Sinnoh with these graphics? Like, can you imagine that? Oh, 100%. Like, I would love to like, see the Garantina cutscene in the, like, distortion world with this shit. Yeah, of course. Like, Sinnoh was what got me back into Pokemon. So, I would definitely love, even, like, even if it's not even, like, this engine or this, like, these graphics, if it's, but even after this point, like, if they remake it, it's definitely going to look fantastic. But at the same time, uh, even at the same time after this, it's just going to look better and better. Like, even, like, let's say they keep making Pokemon games for the 3DS, like, main Pokemon games, and then finally a new handheld comes out. What if the new handheld, like, is actually, like, let's say it's, like, the power, uh, what the power of the Vita should have been. Let's say that. Like, the graphics for that, for those Pokemon games are going to look stunning and fantastic. Well, I mean, the Vita is stunning and fantastic, it's just that there's no good games for it, and even then they were Well, I mean, like, just the graphic. Like, I I'm saying, like, uh, how, like, the processor is in the Vita and stuff like that. Yeah, I know. Just what the Vita could actually handle compared to what people have done with it. I'm just saying, like, graphics-wise, if it's done right, and the, hand the next handheld system that Nintendo makes is along those lines and actually capable of doing stuff, I'd say, like, the next... Pokemon, the first Pokemon game that Game Freak ma uh, makes uh, for that new console, it's going to look even better than this, and that w that's what makes me, like, hyped for it, but I don't want to get into anything yet, because who knows when Nintendo will actually make the next handheld console, since the 3DS sales are still doing, still doing fantastic. One thing I want to bring up, um, if you watch the trailer, you know that, like, stadium thing where you choose your Pokemon on, like, and all that? Yeah. Well, in one of the clips, your character's walking past it, and behind it, there's, like, a little pathway. And if you look on the map, you can, like, see how it's, like, represented by two big trees right next to the weird house, right behind the stadium. And then, kind of, like, to the right of that, there's a random cave that's completely, co uh, like, closed off from the rest of, like, the area. I want to know if that holds any significance to either the legendaries or some story event that's going to happen. Because I have a feeling it's going to be, like, that's going to be where the ruins are, where you meet the legendary. I'd say more story event. Like, that's also, my personal. Also, um, in the trailer, we didn't see any like regular patches of grass, so I want to say like maybe that's where you like your adventure really starts or something, or maybe a shortcut to the city, instead of having to walk all the way back down and like across and all that stuff because that area is pretty huge. And again, because of how big this area is, I don't even know if we'll be able to beat it where they have been with the last few games in the like first twenty four hours of release. I don't know. Um, as I said, it could, like, I'm not hyping up the actual size of the game yet until I see it myself. Yes. Because it could... <laughs> well, well, no, no, no. Like, the actual thing itself. Like, we saw, like, yes, the area we saw is huge, but that was the same thing for Gen 6 as well. Well, I mean, we're mostly with Kalos, though. We saw a huge... We saw this map that was, like, to that we were told to be huge. Like, that little... Thing that we got in the back of the poster and everything and then maybe a few areas but we fully saw like i th like about i think where the uh i want to say do you see those like two brown buildings over to the, like the really far right of the city yeah i want to say that's where the view scene started for when the tr uh, where that truck was because you can see the truck right in front yeah. of the two buildings and from mm -hmm. far off from from like where your character was viewing if you looked forward like you didn't even see past like that third building to the right that looks like a weird mansion or something like that because it's just like I, I still think it's gonna be huge maybe not like oh my god my head's gonna explode kind of huge but I'm just saying we better be getting the fucking running shoes or the bike right off the bat <laughs> I feel yeah, like we're I mean, gonna get the running shoes right off the bat because it happened in gen 6 Especially with like run like that, I feel like they're gonna give it. Cause look at just like the walk from like I'm expecting your house to be like the one down on the beach. I was thinking somewhere around there. there. I mean, yeah, I guess. 
Because then I guess the um the place where you first meet the professor at his lab is there like one right upon like the top of the cliff right across from the Pokemon Center. Right. But then you have to walk all the way up that path just to get your starter Pokemon. Yeah. And which while we're on the topic of that, do you think that the old man in the yellowed shirt is the professor? No. No. <laughs> No, 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 Because no. I have pointed out that... When there's a man wearing a lab coat... Named after like, a tree. When this dude has the poke walls, he has to be him. But there's a dude named after a tree wearing a lab coat right there. Who introduces you uh, to the game? Uh, uh, if you watch the Japanese dude's... trailer, it's like there's a whole intro where it looks like you're sitting on a desktop video chatting with the professor. No, that... man, that's just the professor's assistant, man. It can't be him. But it's definitely not the first time you've ever received starters from anyone else but the professor. Because Serena gave us the starters yeah. in Pokemon X and Y. And uh, Bianca. And uh, yeah, Black Bianca. 2, White 2. I want to say maybe the, the original Diamond of Pearl, didn't you just pick him up from the suitcase and then the Professor Rowan was just like, take him? Yeah. yeah. And Platinum, though, he actually gave him to you. So it's definitely not the first time you received a starter from anyone else but the professor. Like, definitely. But the professor, yeah. So, I'm definitely saying right now that it's gonna be like a Professor Juniper's father kind of thing. Maybe like, or maybe he's like the chief of that village because of why and everything. And I want to state that um, everyone is saying that the professor is the character's cousin, but we all know that people in Hawaii just refer to people as brother and cousin constantly. Like, it's not... Uh, I, I have no comment on this. <laughs> Uh, don't hate on me for his words, his actions. Uh, it's why? What? It's a thing. You're stereotyping people, man. You I'm so <laughs> oh <my laughs> You gotta trigger some people, man. Yeah, all right, why? I trigger people, and the shit that like other people said in their speculation videos do not trigger them. I'm really like concerned about how like people's mindset. No comment. <laughs> but, <laughs> I also hope that, I think we saw ambulances, like, remember the first, like, kind of, like, look we had into it, like, a few months back, where it was just, like, concept art and everything? I really hope that there's, like, ambulances yeah. along the way, because I really don't feel like going from, like, one side of this island all the way back to the other just to heal my Pokemon. What if, instead of just whiting out, oh, I almost dropped my phone, whiting out and scaring away, you have to sit down in the ambulance ride and take a half hour ride down the road to the Pokemon Center. How about kill yourself? But then you guys have fun. <laughs> and then you but pay then the money at the end of it, too. No! That's horrible! <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna say, boy, you could pay $10 for the half hour ride to be done. But I mean, <laughs> and then you have to walk all the way back. The whole game, the whole game is a microtransaction. Oh my god, I would literally not even buy the game. <laughs> I mean... Other than that, I do, like, are, are you supposed to use, I want to say, like, if you look at the beach in front of the two, like, brown buildings, there's, like, a little surf path back to, like, I'm, I'm guessing that surf is going to be a major shortcut in areas like this to go back to, like, half of the area, but I really don't think I get it surfed to maybe, like, the third or fourth gen. I just noticed something. Yeah. Uh, up by the, the platform where you get the starters, to the right, where, like, that little water cave is. Yeah. There's like a weird platform in the water, not like the land platform, but like, there's like, a rock platform type thing. Like, I'm honestly questioning where they're gonna slap this third legendary, and like, like, it's a thing. It's I, gonna be a thing. I feel like that's not just regular rock, because like, all the other rocks are like, placed in outlines in that. And unless they just want to block off like, that little cubby, I really don't... I feel like that's gonna be like, a walkway type mechanic. Or like, the lily pads in the one gym type thing. Like, can you use that to get across? I really want to know what the gyms are. I really just want to know that, though. Like, also, yeah, that I'm crater very... at the bottom of the map... I've, every time I see that, I think of Volcanion. Crater, crater... It's right below the Pokemon Center. Are you talking about, like, the volcano type thing? Yeah. Because I really think that they're going to bring... I'm not saying that they're going to do this for every mystery event that they have, but I really wish that they would bring back, like, maybe the, uh... Like, special story events that would happen, like Darkrai or stuff like that. Because I want to see, like, us have to go into a volcano and catch Volcanium. Well, I have an even better idea. We slap on our Magnus suit that we transfer over from... 
<laughs> I'm gonna stop you right there. No. Okay, and then you hop into the volcano, okay? And then a volcano shoots you up in the space. And that's when And then you, you go to Corrin's Tower! Yes! No, no, no. <laughs> you shot up into space from a volcano, and you oh fight the legendary God. there. What, Deoxys? Actually, that makes me think. Actually, that makes me think, like... Just by how, um... What was that? Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, the way they had, like, the special transition from first catching, uh, Rayquaza and then getting transferred over right to the Oxus. I wonder how many of those Which special kind of things. It fucking sucks, because Mega Rayquaza got one-shotted by freaking Deoxys, like, literally there, and it's like, wow, you forced me to put this guy into my team, Mega Evolve him, and it's like, he dies. <laughs> How, what am I riding in space now? I am floating in space with a dead Rayquaza floating around my cop. It's like, what? It's like, and then I have to send out stuff like a side, maybe like a Psyduck or something in space. How, how's its head, how's it not suffocating to death? Alright, why are you I running mean, Psyduck? Okay, man. Because at why? some point I actually did have a Psyduck during that fight. I mean, what are you doing? I'm not really referring to the battle. I wasn't, no, because I was training up a Psyduck for my Pokedex, but I didn't expect it automatically be launched into the sun. <laughs> So I had to have Psyduck in there, and luckily he had Yawn, because that's the only reason I caught Deoxys. A level of like 15 Psyduck with Yawn. I mean, I was just going to say, like, I'm not saying the battles themselves, I'm just meaning like special transitions for that kind of thing. Like, just how you finally catch a Pokemon, and it's like, let's have like an actually really good cutscene to actually transition to trying to get a different Pokemon. Like that kind of special arrangement. Also, if, um, uh, just to go back to the, um, because we're talking about battles right at the moment, if you look back at the Rowlet screenshot, a lot of people are saying that, like, there is going to be a Pokemon Coliseum-esque kind of thing to the battles where you're going to be able to see each trainer in the background. I really kind of wish, I really want that to be a thing, because what's the point of, for me, cause, yeah. I mean, I mean, I like looking at my character customized and everything while I run around the world and everything, but... I really only did it in X and Y so I can see it in battle, and even then you never really saw it in battle. You see them once, throw the Pokeballs out, and then that's it. Yeah. Like, that and- can we talk about how this girl went to Glove World before she started her Pokemon adventure? <laughs> like, you see this, right? I don't see anything wrong with the, the hats, okay, man? Pokemon, you're doing a good job. Uh, keep up the good work. <laughs> Like, I feel bad for any of the girls who hate that hat, and if character customization will not be a thing, I don't know. But if they, they get stuck, if they get stuck with that hat, I would automatically hate the game. I mean, we did see that, uh, the shirt did change to black and white instead of the blue and white that it was for most of the trailer. And so, somewhere uh, in the Japanese trailer, the color of the pants changed color. But, um... Why don't we talk about the legendaries now? Let's go straight on to the, uh, that Sun Legendary, because we were rambling on about that map for quite a bit. <laughs> so, uh, Don't start on with the Sun one, you said? Yeah, because that, that's, like, the first one that shows up in the trailer and everything. I was kind of going in order by that with all the screenshots, but the way that it's sent was just weird. But... Yeah, This Legendary is... Freaking just automatically makes me think of like Zoids or Mecha or something like that. It's definitely that's robot. what I thought though. Like some like kind of mech type thing. Yeah, I am perfectly okay with that. I'm looking at the background to it, and you see like both the sun and moon. So are like the bad villain, or are the villains going to be in like each game, like both the teams? I don't know, like but if you look at the next screenshot those. of the next legendary, the uh, those things are reversed. I don't know what kind of significance that holds, but, uh, it's just something. So most likely it'll be, like, just that it's the same building and architecture, it's just that it's a different legendary. For that, and I want to know why, I mean, I guess they could done it just for, like, cinematic reasons in the trailer, but I, I want to, like, I had a theory a long time ago where it's, like, the team sort of recaptured the legendaries and made it like eternally day and eternally night at some point, kind of like how it was constantly raining and knowing a ruby and alpha sapphire and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. like, I was thinking maybe like the only way to restore that kind of like cycle is to like capture or defeat this Pokemon because I, I think it's pretty weird that like 
you have this Pokemon that's supposed to represent night only showing up at night in a cutscene, but then you have like the sun one. I mean, again, it could have been for cinematic reasons, but I just think it's a little bit off somehow. Oh, uh, I, I feel like it's just whenever you're around that Pokemon, I guess it becomes like night. So maybe if you build the Pokemon, you will change it to daytime, man. Maybe Night Sunny cycles. Day and Moonlight will actually have outside effects? I mean, no, because that'd be kind of stupid. Because then it, like, messes up the whole, like, internal clock system that they have in place, where it's like, only certain Pokemon would be caught at night and day, and then it's like, it'd mess up the calendar or something on the D. I don't know. It just, it just feels like that would be a weirdly, like, weird system to put in place. I guess, yeah. I'd also like to say I love how when it zo when the trailer zooms in on the lion's face or whatever, it looks just like outer space or something inside of his mask or visor or whatever. Because I still have a feeling this thing's a robot. His face is a shooting star. <laughs> his face is a star, man. I mean, I can see a star. I can see a sun. I can mostly see the star because of the, like the five points for some reason in the bottom one doesn't have like a thing. And the two side ones don't have things. Well, that, those, those are his whiskers, George. <laughs> those are still things. <laughs> <laughs> but what I would have liked seeing if we move on to... The, I mean, unless, do you guys have anything else to add on to this legendary? Um, not too much. I mean, we talked about the architecture of the legendary. Also. I think I think Legendary looks awesome. I, I like his awesome shin guards. Really I really think it's going to be... A fire steel type, or I, looking back at what uh, George said the other day, I really do think it might actually, at some point, be a fire electric type because of the whole robot lookingness or whatever. I'm just gonna call everything a fire electric type because I want that typing. Yeah. Like earlier, I said Lit Litten's gonna be a, a fire electric type. I'm just saying this is fire electric type. Eventually, one of these are gonna be correct. Puplio's fire <laughs> electric type confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> Leo's gonna be a fire electric type when he fully evolves. Gonna completely drop the water type. Alright. Alright, he's just going to be straight up a clown with, like, the buzzer hand. With the flame flower. Right. So let's move on to the next legendary, which is a Dracula ass mofo. And I was really hoping that the inside of his wings were actually just, like, outer space or something. Kind of like that moving effect that you see in, like, cartoons where they just, like, put a regular background and when you look at it from different angles it moves uh, I kind of like what they did here though I don't I really do like I don't how, like, know what it reminds me of though. it's familiar like the, f the head of it looks reminds me of something and I don't know what uh, would it be A. the moon B. the moon no something else from yeah, anime the moon. like an anime like, character yeah. uh, would that. it be the moon from Soul Eater? No, it's not a moon. <laughs> it's like a character or something. I guess, I mean, the top of its head can be... I mean, if you just take the silhouette of the top of the head, it can be fused to, like, the top part of the Thousand Sunny from One Piece, but that's it. I mean, yeah. I want to say, though, this will either be a Dragon Dark type, because you know how Pokemon likes to throw in those Dragon Legendaries, or a Dark Ice type. I feel like it's going to be like a fairy flying or like I want to say like fairy ghost or fairy dark. I guess I can see the fairy thing cuz I mean it's cuz usually the fairy pokemon have like that weird like wismal surrounding to them or something like that or just they look adorable and cute and everything but like I want to say ghost type cuz like it kind of looks like a ghost type to me. The reason I thought dark and ice was because, like, the dark side of the moon, how it's just, like, sub-zero temperatures and shit like that. And it, it just seems like this would kind of be, like, a representative of the dark side of the moon. This is Donald Trump. It's, uh... uh I'm saying it will be Pink Floyd. <laughs> it's Lady Gaga from one of her concerts. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, personally, yeah. I think both, honestly, both the legendaries to me look actually really good. Like, um, I'm definitely I'm going with the fuzzy really babies, though. Yeah, but I mean, like, I'm not too into the, a lot of the legendaries, but I mean, I think this one's 
These two are kind of up there with one of the better design ones, in my opinion. Because just looking at both of them, like both of these screenshots, they look fantastic. I think the, like, the... What is it? The um, quality of the legendaries started going down after Sinnoh because there was so many of them with so like great de great designs that could have been spread out throughout the regions, but instead they just like made good like maybe fifteen legendaries for one. Because mm -hmm. Sinnoh was like you had Dialga, Palkia, Garantina, Asluf, Mess Spirit, um, uh, the other one. I the one that no one cared about. Are we gonna are we gonna skip over the fact that Gen 3 had like the ugliest legendaries out there? I think that Gen 3 had pretty good cool legendaries. Look at Groudon and tell me that Ooh. thing does not look goofy. Groudon was like my second favorite legendary at that point until I realized that Rayquaza actually existed. Do not talk to me in the sun ever again. You don't have a sun. Uh, I have Rowlet. <laughs> I was gonna say, how could I t not talk to your son ever again if you already pre-ordered your Pokemon Moon? <laughs> uh, I pre-ordered Moon before uh, the trailers came out. And, uh, do you? No, uh, I have a question. Go do you regret that decision? Do you regret that decision? Do I? Uh, I saw I saw the Pokemon Sun and I was like, oh, dude, I really want to get Pokemon Sun now. And I saw the Moon one and I'm like. Yo, that thing's probably gonna be power. Because and it looks pretty cool. I think the real regret's gonna come down the line right when they start announcing like the uh, the version the specific, specific, yeah, the game specific Pokemon and stuff like that. I'm not saying you automatically. I'm just saying like there might be a really cool. It's like how I felt when I like yeah. wanted Electabuzz in like Pokemon Blue or something. I don't know. Well, I got Pokemon X. I wanted Squelp. You can only get Squelp. Pokemon Y and like Jogaldi looked so cool when I saw like the Pokedex for it. I just instantly wanted it. So I sat there and I sat there and I fished and fished. Oh, that was closer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, either way though, like you, you spent time and then you realized there was a version exclusive that you didn't have. And I went out. And I bought it myself, uh, in action replay, instead of buying myself the actual version of it. Okay. Uh, it? moving on. Uh, I did not buy that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I play my games completely legit. Listen. Don't look into it. Well, I mean, I use moving mine on. so I can do other save games, like for, uh, my Nuzlocke that I finished on Pokemon Ruby and- our Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and just, like, stuff like that I use it for. Other than that, I mean, yeah, maybe an event item that I don't have access to at the point, because I know I can't get- the, I, I don't have access to the Darkrai event right now, which kind of sucks. But, oh yeah, I, th I always wait to pre-order the games until I, like, know what Pokemon I mean exclusive to what, and, like, what exactly pre-order just... gift you're gonna get. I think it's the second time I've done this now, too, because I'm pretty sure I pre-ordered X before the trailers were out. And then I saw uh, Xerneas, and I was like, yo, yo, you have a tail that's pretty dope. And yeah. then I got Xerneas, and I was like, okay, this is power. <laughs> you get a, what's it called, like aromatherapy or something like that, and it just does work. But I mean Oblivion Wing, though. Catch Moon Blast. I love it not. <laughs> I mean, like, either way, though, like, yeah, I mean, I was probably gonna wait anyways because knowing me i sit there thinking like like if i went out today and pre-ordered the game and then by the time november 18th it was yeah yes by the time november 18th comes i'm just saying that like i wish i pre-ordered the game and i look at my like depending on who like uh i pre-ordered it from i just look like wait i had a pre-order <laughs> like i would most likely forget so i'd rather just wait until like a few weeks before the game actually comes out because I would definitely forget in the uh, six months that I'll be waiting. One thing I hate about pre-orders though is like usually when we pre-order it the game is already like two weeks away but then it's like the last week where it's like extremely hard to pre-order. It's just, yeah man, you get a friggin' lunchbox and a minifigure if you pre-order it at Walmart and everyone's everyone who went to GameStop's like, 
I I got a shitty poster over this. It is a it is a pit poster. I mean, I will like say thanks to those people at GameStop, we did get those free Smash belts because there was too many or whatever. Which, yeah, that was fun. Uh, I did. That's why, that's why I want to continue the tradition. Like, I want to see Flygon Man again. That <laughs> that hat though. <laughs> I mean, I mean, when I got in the car and my mom saw him, he was, like, very questioning of my life by that point, but, I mean, I thought... It's just, I th it was just Mr. Newell with a flag on it. <laughs> 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 but, I mean, I, I really am looking forward to the games, and I really think they're going to miss a big opportunity if they do not include tropical birds or a new spider-type Pokemon. Okay, okay, Relic. Uh, whatever, you know, tropical bird? No. Uh, <laughs> it's an owl! There's, one. like, I mean, another parrot or something, or maybe add an evolution to, like, chat on it. Because that's, like, an actual tropical bird. An owl, it's like, there's owls around here. I can go down the street. There's, like, an owl. You're telling I mean, me, I, I, you're telling I mean, me this I isn't a lying. tropical owl? Tropical bird. <laughs> Tropical birds, I, as I, I in like maybe a peacock me. or a parrot or something like that. I, I was about to say, I was about to say, I would not mind a peacock uh, Pokemon. Uh, a peacock Pokemon, yeah, I think that would look awesome. With a rainbow and everything, and like just has its tail. Exactly, yeah. And then you have all the gay people being like, Pokemon really supports like... gays. Uh, <laughs> cut, cut the footage. Cut the footage. <laughs> no, I just think Hawaii. I think peacocks. No, <laughs> well, well, it's just some tropical bird in general, because, like, whenever, whenever, you, like, whenever you see something about Hawaii, there's always, like, a really beautiful-looking bird with, like, all the colors of the rainbow and everything, and it's just, like, this thing that you really need to take a picture of, or just something that you want as a souvenir or something. Right, I'm yeah. looking at one. One looks like a cardinal. One is straight up a goose. You are a goose, my friend. <laughs> I mean, like, either way, like... Uh, I just think like there just shouldn't be like more tropical type. I want a Phoenix or Pokemon. Anything like that. A Toucan. There should be a uh, Toucan Pokemon. Yeah, I I'd say that. But I mean, I, I just either way, like I we I mean they. Can I just realized that statement I said, and I'm like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> but I mean, like. <laughs> uh, but I mean, like. Just, we already have, like, no idea what kind of Pokemon they're putting in the game. Like, we could be wanting this and could be done, and, but at the same time, it may not be done. But, but it's just the fact that we don't really know how these games are going to be until they're in our hands. Like, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but unless, like, we're doing more stuff like this and the further the, the lo down the line... I'm kind of going to be avoiding the game just so that I'm not like seeing as much of the. I, mean, I was, being I, I was planning on doing that. That's the reason I made these two videos in the first place was just to like speculate on what we have so far. I mean, I'm only going to really do this when new trailers and like pictures and stuff come out. So, hey. so uh, yeah, I mean, like, I looked up some more Hawaiian birds. Well, birds that are found in Hawaii, and uh. We don't have a turkey Pokemon. He's right. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I, that would be pretty <clears throat> fun. I mean, like, literally just I mean, Google I... tropical birds, and there's, like, so many things that you could just, like... Mostly a toucan. I really want a toucan now. Toucan sand confirmed for Pokemon Sun and Moon. I just want to clarify something from before, like... When I was saying I, I'm not hyping the game as much, like, with the size of the map, like, it's, it's not that, like, I'm doubting the game at all. It's just that with I'm just doubting it to some extent because of how Gen 6 was. Like, that's all I'm really doing. Like, it, it could be, like, a gigantic map and all that, and I'll be f amazed. It's just that just because of Gen 6, I'm waiting for that opinion until... I have the game myself to really judge it because Gen 6 ruined that kind of speculation for me. Uh, just a reminder for you guys and whoever's going to be watching this, you can pick up a free shiny Xerneas today from uh, the Wi Fi. Thanks for dating the video, man. <laughs> I mean, it's already dated because we're talking about the trailers of freaking Sun and Moon. Ah, dude. <laughs> mm. 
Ah, dude, they, they, we're talking about the trailer that came out like a week ago in October. Do you want to know the official <laughs> poll scores at the moment for who's choosing what on uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon? 30... I'm guessing Litten is at the top. Nah, Litten and Valid are tied, and Puplet, or Puplet, whatever, is at a 26%. He's basically gonna be Piplup. <laughs> no, not Piplup, uh, Chikorita. About to say, Piplup was picked by a lot of people. I also love how all the Pokemon are around the same uh, weight and height. Like, they're all about a foot tall and they all weigh from uh, like 3 to 15 pounds. For me personally, as I said, of all the starters I could work with, like, I'm pretty happy with this one. As I said, like, for, I'll make Guruby and Alpha Sapphire, but I had to use Torchic because I chose, chose the better one. I chose a Trico, okay? So Look at a Trico. I... Tell me it's better. I only choose grass types because I've chosen grass types starting at Gen 3 up until now. I mean, I always choose fire types, but like Gen 4 is the only exception to that. <laughs> oh, sorry, Gen 3. Wow. <laughs> but uh, I was gonna say, because of the weight of Rowlet, I was expecting him to be the fast special attacker. And for like Lit Leo, or Litten, they're just like maybe the between ground of just like physical and special attacks. And Pupolo weighs a total of like 17 pounds. And is only a foot tall. I'm expecting him to be like a physical ta like tank. Yeah, it's like I said. I, I imagine him to be like the wall rain, and the other two are gonna be like. I see Lipton's gonna be like. I feel like he's gonna be a bulky physical attacker for some reason. And I feel like uh oh crap, or whatever the one I'm thinking. I, I, uh, a Rallet will be a fast special attacker. I really just love these. I, I am, like, from the last two generations, like from, uh, what was it, black and white and, uh, like X and Y. I think this is the first time I've been this hyped about uh, starter Pokemon since Gen two. When I saw Gen fours, I was hyped. Gen four, the only one I liked was Chinchar. <laughs> And then when I saw Gen 6, I was I was hyped for uh, Chespin. That was about it. Was... The rest of the starters between there, like Gen 5, I didn't really care, because they all looked kind of bland. Gen 5, I just did not appreciate uh, Banana Snake, um, weird otter Pokemon that was actually pretty cool out of the three, now that I think about it, and Topeg was... Eh, it was in the mid. I just found it kind of weird for a pig to be wearing a diaper, man. It's, uh, it's a, it's a unitard. Yeah, you tell yourself that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no. You're talking about, I, I thought you were meant, uh, pig knight and, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a diaper. That's definitely a diaper. I realize how I'm constantly making these mistakes for uh, all these generations and stuff, but for the background of these videos I'm making, I'm using this GIF where it has all the generations to date starters. Like, all I need to do is count from 1 to 7 and I'm Gucci, but nah. <laughs> you got this, man. I don't think he's got it. I don't think so either. I mean, hey. Listen. Hi. But I mean, there was some other things I wanted to talk. I can't really remember now. Um, most like, uh, okay. Can you also agree that the lady that we see in the beginning of the game is mom? See, I'm not sure about that. I really don't think we came to this region by ourselves. I think that the reason that the Japanese trailer for the game was displayed the way it was is because the kid kind of like related to the Pokemon trainer in the game so that's why he liked it so much 
Because if you look in, if he looks in the context clues, your trainer is not from the Alo the Alola region or whatever it's called. Because like you even get like an introduction where the professor's like, "Welcome to the Alola region, cousin," and stuff like that. And you don't even meet him the first time in person. You meet him through video call. So I'm expecting that's like on maybe on a boat or something on the way while moving to Hawaii or Alola. Could also be on like the mile walk on the way to his uh to his left. Yeah, I mean, I mean, <laughs> well, from what we from what we guessed, he lives close to the lab because remember we said that. We thought his house was the one on the beach, and the lab was, like, right across from the Pokemon Center. Alright, uh, I, I'm on Google Images right now looking at pictures of Rowlet, and I'm finding some weird stuff. So, uh, I'm going to put in L God. Oh, okay, I'm putting an end to this. Uh, no more, don't, don't search up the starters, people. Doesn't end out nicely. You end up seeing an owl. It's only been 24 hours. Why? An owl that is like, like he's been lifting weights. Green <laughs> thong, man. It's... So I'm guessing you mean like the Magikarp thing, where he's just like a human body with a speedo, just a Magikarp head. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I guess that's really what we have to talk about. We already we talked about pretty much everything we want to the character custom. How far do you think we're going to get into character customization if they allow it? Do you think it's going to be better the next and Y or about the same? Or I, I hope it's better. I, I feel like it's going to be better. It needs to be better because the hairstyles just were kind of garbage and all that. And it was... I feel like there's going to be a better yeah, hair salon type thing. I, I actually want to talk. Oh, for sure. I actually want to talk about real quick, like before we end this off. Like, I want to talk, talk about um, like way they change the graphics. Like, I am Luna. I think that's my favorite. Is he cutting out for anyone else? Because yes, okay. he's, he's just cutting. I thought it was me. To be honest, I thought it was me, and I was looking at the recording. I'm like, this is gonna oh, suck. <laughs> I, th I think he's okay. laughing. To reiterate, to reiterate, um, I I just want to talk about it real quick, like the actual uh, way they changed the graphics for this game, like because I think that's my favorite part of this show. Because yeah. like I I I wasn't like. I didn't mind it, but I wasn't a huge fan of the fact, like, Chibi. it showed, like, in Gen 6, like, what your characters could be in battle form, but then the rest of the game is, like, chibi form and stuff like that. Yeah, you look like, uh, characters out of, what's it called, uh, Braverly, uh, Braverly Default. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't mind it, it's just like, Yeah, it's not, like, a bad style, it's just, it's like, when you show... When you show your trainer that look like an actual human, and then, like, I don't know, the rest of meh. Yeah, even in battle in that, you looked like a normal, like, person, and then you just, like, shrunk down again. I guess that's, like, something they've been doing in, like, all the games for a while. I mean, the art style yeah, from this game, like, know. right from the beginning of the trailer where you look at your trainer, it automatically just reminded me of Pokemon Coliseum because everything in that, like, even though it had, like, a kind of cartoonish vibe to it, everyone was still, like, proportionate and looked human instead of, yeah. yo, we're all cute little babies, and then we transform into people. <laughs> and then back to the cute little babies. Yeah, little baby. Uh, I don't know what, uh, what else there is to cover. I at this point, I, I, I mean, the only other thing is, um, I don't remember, I don't know if you remember this, like quote unquote leak that happened a while ago, but it was like on, it was like a prediction of the starters, I guess someone did, and the second they showed the grass starter, which actually was an owl, and the more I look at it, the more uh, it can become like a second evolution to Rowlet. I believe if you go into Sleepy Jirachi's video, he has pictures of those, but. 
the second of the second like Pokemon for the fire makes no sense, but the third is also a sea lion or is like a seal. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. I don't. I guess it, it was either a I mean, really lucky just, prediction it's, it's, or just something. Yeah, but I mean, it's just difficult because we have no idea what leaks are fake and what are real. Like, that's the issue, like, a lot of things are today. Because instantly it's like, we don't know what to believe. Like, anything, like, that comes out that's a leak is like, how can you believe this? Especially after, like, uh, when like that leak came out for Smash Bros saying that Rayman was going to be in the game like at first everything because of how well it was done like it was instantly like wow that is legitimate that is purely real and then not even like 12 hours later the guy's like yeah it was fake like how can we believe anything now like it's just that kind of thing like we don't know what to believe in basically if you sat for this whole video just keep an eye out on the Pokemon YouTube channel and the Twitter, just make sure you keep up to date with all the stuff that's gonna happen. Unless you wanna be like Chuckleton and just wait till we do Bye. these like speculation videos. I mean yeah. Or be like me and just like follow Thanks. every core code core core thing and be like, yeah, that's that's probably gonna happen, to be honest, because like they they were right on most of the stuff. One thing that confused me is where's Magi where's Magirna gonna fit into this? Because now that I look at the Fire Legendary and the, like Mad, they both look like human-made Pokemon to some extent. Oh, uh, it's probably gonna be a clock tower or something. I <laughs> mean, actually, that's pretty. That's pretty good speculation because the whole time and day kind of thing, or the night and day kind of thing. I, I can see the clock taking a part of the story. You know, being like a huge sundial or something like that. Right. I'm, I'm, there was actually a, there was actually another Pokemon game where the clock played a, a major part in the story. I believe it was a uh, Gen Three. You uh, you when you first arrive at your house, it gets all hyped up that you were just gifted a brand new clock. Oh my! Like I thought, I honestly thought you were gonna make some kind of like actual thought, connect. I, and it's like no. <laughs> Get out of here. I thought that was like going really serious, but then he's just like, yeah, it's a clock. Oh my god. Well, yeah. well, I don't. Well, the first game that actually did that was Gen 2. I mean, I'm just gonna say that. Right. Listen, that actually did change night and the day. You listen here, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen like, here. I've got nothing to say, but you listen here. I'm, I'm listening. Good talk. <laughs> I mean, overall, I did think we covered pretty much everything we needed to. We made our predictions for what we think is going to happen. We covered like what we thought the region was going to be like, the legendaries, um, characters that were shown in the trailer. I think the only thing we actually didn't cover was actually the rival himself, but I mean... We can't really say anything because all we did was sh see him put his hands behind his head and just be like, "Sup, bro." Sad, dude. But just because of the friendly demeanor he appeared in, I really uh, do think that we're not going to be getting that like rivalry that everyone wants it back. I feel like it's going to be like a, a Wally type rivalry. Yeah, I uh, could speak yes very much. <laughs> Wally, I, I can see that. I was thinking more of maybe. I can yeah. See that. It's like Wally well, wasn't intimidating and he didn't like pose much of a threat, but he was there. He was just I mean kind of like... at the end of the game when that mega gale aid came out of nowhere, he was kind of a threat. I mean, depends on how you train your Pokemon, but he was it was still pretty cool. I mean, pop I was awesome. like, oh cool. Cool, I'm playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Knock now. No, it just instantly <laughs> knocked it out. It's it bodied. I mean, for my team, I didn't have any dark or ghost types on mine, so I didn't really just like body. I mean, I did, but... so it was like, it was like just body, but at the same time, I, I thought it was awesome. So I had a, I had a flying type. That's that's all you really needed. <laughs> so, the, I don't, this is gonna be like the only game I nickname my starter Pokemon through a legit playthrough, but I mean. I don't know why, it's just like automatically I want to nickname the owl, I want to nickname the freaking cat. I, the seal, I, it's just, I want to nickname the seal Homer Simpson. 
I kind of want to nickname the owl, owl like Mr. Owl or Tootsie oh. Pop. I mean, this is Tootsie Pop's pretty good too. But I feel like. I honestly feel like its evolution line is going to go from that to Blathers from Animal Crossing to the owl from Ocarina of Time. Did you say you didn't know what I was talking about? about the Tootsie Pop? One. Two, two, two. Uh, so, so three. No, I know, I know that. We are I, I just don't more. even know what's happening anymore. I, we were just talking about this like... Uh, are we going to play this game any differently <laughs> than what we've played so far? Um... I'm going to try to slow this run down because in like Gen 6 I kind of speed ran it and beat it in like a day, day and a half. I mean, I... Out of all... So I kind of <laughs> want this game to last longer because like... I'm not expecting... Uh, what was I gonna go? A great I'm, I'm not game expecting. Post -game. Yeah, because like, I imagine a story for this is probably going to be like amazing, and I'm I don't think they're gonna have that much like post story. I mean, we can have some but kind of post story know. with like. We are in the middle of. I I think it kind of would make sense to add uh, kind of like how Soul Silver and Heart Gold had where they had an area for replies like Ground on and Kyogre. Because this takes place well, in think... the ocean with a volcano and the sky, I mean... I was about to say, I think we know how to get all three. You go to the water, catch Kyogre, go into the volcano, get Groudon, get the Magma Suit, get shot into space, get Rayquaza. I, I really hope that they do bring back the thing from, like, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, where you can go around and go into Hoopa's Rings and stuff and catch legendaries, because, I mean, I don't like... Mm -hmm. Remember in, uh, Omega oh, Ruby and Alpha Sapphire? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Like, we go oh, through every so generation and everything. About, yeah, I was so lost about what you were talking about, but then I remember, like, the Mirage Islands and that. Yeah. I, like, want, I want the flying feature to be back, and not with stress, the like, The flying Megawatt feature would be perfect be... for this game. Especially if the islands are all big as the first one. If you use the Latios and Latios flying through that, I, I, would, it, I would feel insane. Like, but I don't want it just to be Latios and Latios. As long as a Pokemon can fly, just even if you give it like a default bird animation like that silly like Squall. blacked out silhouette type thing, like if you just had that and like your character on it, I'd be happy with that. I as see. long as you have to like fly around it, especially you're saying it's like a tropical place, like who doesn't want to fly around that? I do hope that there's different weather changing and not just in certain routes like it did routes in uh like Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire and X and Y, I really want it to be like, cause like, it's a tropical area, so it's supposed to rain like quite a bit, especially if it's surrounded by water. I I really wish that there's, I really want that to be like wet thunderstorms and stuff at a certain point. Isn't there always like a place where it snows? Yes. Or, wait, the Gen Six have snow? Um, X and Y, yes. There was a whole like area to it. And plus, there's a whole, like, two areas to it. There's one that had, like, the whole snow cave. Oh, and yeah, there was, yeah, like, I completely generator. forgot about the mammoth swine. Yeah. Yeah, so, I wonder how they're going to throw in a, a snow place into this. Probably we're going to have to climb up a mountain. They're coming around the mountain, watch you come. It makes sense, oh, because no, even for a tropical down. area, the higher up you go, it's supposed to get colder. So maybe if there's like there's some point where we climb like a really big mountain and it just starts snowing. And then and it off. takes us to space and we fight Rayquaza. No. No. <laughs> I, that's really about it. That's really all we can say about what we think about the trailer and the Pokemon and all that. So, I mean... Leave your yeah, comments I, down I mean, below, your speculations, do whatever, share it with people, show the, share the news, man, share the love. And just remember, I called it about getting shot at a volcano into space. And remember, I called, I it. called it when I said probably it will be fire electric type. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so until next time, I'm the Gusty Gengar, these are... Lord Chuckleton the Third and Mikey Two Eight Two, and we'll see you at the next time a trailer or something comes out. <laughs>